Meghan and Harry's attempt to blame Wales and Mike Tyndall for overshadowing their Invictus games is absurd. How many times has Meghan tried to reinvent herself in the past year? In recent days, Meghan Markle's PR team has continuously leaked her readiness for another significant image makeover. According to an insider, Meghan has been in talks with documentary filmmakers and leading fashion houses, although no firm commitments have been made yet. Another insider suggests that Meghan is taking her time, contemplating her next moves. After Spotify ended its multi-year deal with Harry and Meghan, she is considering a relaunch of her lifestyle blog, The Tig. However, returning to acting is currently not on the table, while she also contemplates a future in politics, a dream she's held since childhood. Currently, she and Harry, with whom she recently attended the Invictus Games in Germany, are approaching projects one by one. There have been some disappointments, according to the second insider, but overall, they are enthusiastic about their future. Yet, her challenge is that there's no true self to reinvent, she's an empty figure relying on shortcuts rather than hard work. Likewise, her mother took a similar path, marrying a successful lighting director with hopes of landing more makeup assistant jobs. However, her mother's reluctance to learn led to failing the professional exam. Megan, too, opted for dishonest shortcuts instead of putting in the hard work. Her SAG-AFTRA card was obtained through dishonest means, likely by providing false information to producers. Rather than learning from her failures, she merely manifests reinvention and subsequently fails due to a lack of effort. Megan's appearance at the Invictus Games in Germany indicates her waning popularity. It's surprising that Meghan and Harry accused the Willises and Mike Tyndall of upstaging them, as they've typically tried to overshadow the royal family. The episode of The Good, The Bad and the Rugby with the senior royals was quite popular, highlighting that Princess Anne Wales and Mike Tyndall are more compelling figures than Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex. Private admissions within the Merrill's circle acknowledge that the Invictus Games did not improve their image. They often project their failures onto scapegoats. Meghan has no place at the Invictus Games beyond being a spectator or a guest at official banquets, along with her husband. The games are not her show or her charity. The British royal family is consistently seen in public, fulfilling their role as public servants. In contrast, the Merrills are rarely seen and frequently on extended vacations far from their children, despite claiming to be devoted parents. Their philanthropic efforts will always be overshadowed by the royal family's multi-million pound contributions, given their reluctance to work and limited financial power. The historic institution and royal titles they covet are inextricably linked to public service, while the Sussexes hoard these titles without the accompanying responsibilities. They will always be outshone by the royal family in various ways, and many future royal generations will surpass them, leading them into the irrelevance they deserve.